The third rule of show business and business is don't worry what other people think of you because they seldom do. And finally, recognize good luck when it hits you. There is no substitute for monumental good luck. And I know I have been blessed with far more than my share of this elusive ingredient over the, rule, over the years. And there's one more film business rule. If it's immortality you're after, you can always attain this by spectacular failure. I remember in particular a film called Revolution starring Al Pacino, a film that our company was asked to rescue after production had been shut down because it was wildly over budget. The film was a total commercial disaster and the British press had a field day comparing it to Michael Cimino's financial disaster, Heaven's Gate. And the British press managed to turn the disaster into a national obsession. When the video of Revolution was eventually released a few months after its theatrical release, there was a double page ad in all the main newspapers which said, Revolution, now available on video. See how truly awful it is in the comfort of your own home. Success, on the other hand, can lead to some unexpected and frequently amusing moments. Watership Down, the first film I was involved in, which you recall was about a family of rabbits, was a big success. And this led to a sign in the window of a butcher's shop specializing in selling game. The sign said simply, you've read the book, you've seen the movie, now taste the cast. Um, I believe that storytelling is at the root of every community, every family, every culture, and even every business. It's a tradition that has been carried on in your country and your society for thousands of years. I think that as businessmen, we have a re responsibility to affect change. And storytelling, through the magic of the movies, is one of the most powerful tools we have to do this. Over the years, our company has been involved with films that focus primarily on human rights, the environment, cultural diversity, and religious tolerance. And these films have been seen by hundreds of millions of people around the world. And many, in fact, most of these films, you may be surprised to learn, benefited from some form of corporate or private sponsorship. I believe that corporate sponsorship is essential if we are to continue to use the full power of the cinema to impact social, environmental, and political change. Governments alone are simply not able to achieve these changes. But filmmakers working with businessmen can. A great example of this is my good friend Jeff Skoll, the first president of eBay, who founded a media company, Participant Media, after he retired from eBay at the age of 35. Jeff and Participant have done more to engage corporate and individual sponsors in cause-related films and social outreach than any other company in the film business. I'm referring to films such as An Inconvenient Truth, Good Night and Good Luck, uh, our own film Oceans, and uh, Participant's current high-impact film about the U.S. education system, Waiting for Superman. All extraordinary examples of films that affect social change. And there is another, even more relevant example. A few years ago, uh, Jeff financed the dubbing of an Arabic language version of our film, Gandhi. The dubbing employed 110 uh, mainly Palestinian actors cost several hundred thousand dollars, and we did the dubbing in Ramallah. The film was then shown to enthusiastic audiences in Arabic in cities, towns, and refugee camps in Palestine, Hebron, Nablus, Jerusalem, and various other cities in the Middle East, uh, bringing Gandhi's message of nonviolence to people who had only known war for most of their lives. 
One of the most emotional experiences, most rewarding experiences of my life was speaking uh, to young audience members following several of these screenings, specifically in Kalandia in Palestine, and incidentally, these screenings continue to this day, and we continue to have dialogue with young people who see this Arabic version of Gandhi. I believe that this single act of corporate sponsorship on the part of Jeff, Jeff Skoll has had a stunning and lasting impact on literally thousands of young Palestinians and Israelis, and has led to a documentary which Jeff and I are producing called The Peacemakers, which is about the behind the scenes efforts of young Israelis and Palestinians that we've met over the years working together to bring peace to their troubled land. All this could never have happened without corporate sponsorship. I think when considering which project to sponsor, business executives should just simply trust their gut feelings, trust their intuition, and do what's good for mankind as a whole and not simply focus on corp narrow corporate interests. I think there's an important place in this world for what my father called corporate compassion. Recently, a, a woman by the name of Karen Armstrong has taken this a step further with the founding of what she calls her Charter for Compassion. Karen has adopted her theology of orthopraxy which she refers to as authentic living, honoring and accepting each other's weaknesses and strengths, urging us to ground our lives in the conviction that compassion is a habit of mind that is transforming. I believe that we, if we as businessmen are to affect change, we need to actively support socially responsible media, even when there is no hope of a return, financial or otherwise. As businessmen, we need to emphasize our compassion to be creative, and we need, must trust our instincts. You'll be surprised where this will lead you. For example, the highly successful film, A River's Run, River Run Through It, which you saw a short clip from earlier, was a project that languished in Hollywood for many years. The standard studio response was, why on earth would anyone want to see a film about fly fishing? My father taught me how to fly fish in northern Quebec, where I grew up. And the passion for fly fishing, which I inherited from him, convinced me that we should make the movie. Pure gut feeling. With the support of a variety of fishing equipment companies and private sponsors, the film was made and the impact this film had on the environment was extraordinary. As someone said when they saw the film, if people concentrated on the really important things in life, there would be a shortage of fishing rods. Now, thinking how to conclude my comments this evening, I was reminded of what Arthur C. Clarke once said. Sometimes I think we're alone in the universe, and then sometimes I think we are not. In either case, the idea is really quite staggering. As I ponder this, and I was thinking about this last night as I looked at the moon and the stars, and as I ponder the future, I find the older I get, the more I turn to reflection instead of plain reflex and the more I listen to people who don't talk much, so I'll stop talking soon. As George Eliot wrote, if we had a keen vision and feeling of all ordinary human life, it would be like hearing the grass grow and the squirrel's heartbeat, and we should die of that roar that lies on the other side of silence. More often than not, when I'm reading a script, it is the silent moments in movies, as it is in life, that seem to have the greatest impact. 